Welcome to a live church online. Glad you are taking time to watch this video. Today I want to talk about who does Jesus say is blessed? Who is blessed in this life, but not only in this life, but for the next life, the life in eternity. And so we're going to turn to Matthew 5, and it's famously called the Sermon on the Mount. We're not going to talk about every detail today because it's a lot to dig through. and kind of going to peel away a little bit at a time. And so we're going back to a place where Jesus really spoke many words that are the key components, kind of stone by stone, building a foundation to build our life upon him. And so in Matthew 5, we're going to just read from verse 1 on through to verse 12. And if you want to turn there in your Bibles, you're more than welcome to do that. You can uh, join with us. I'm reading from the ESV version. And it says this, Matthew 5, starting in verse 1. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. He's talking to these people about who is blessed. And at least in the church world, and even outside of the church world, so many people, when good things happen to them, were saying, man, I'm just blessed. You know, I'm just thankful. I'm grateful. I'm blessed. They're blessed. Look at how much they have. Look at the house they have. Look at the car they have. And we start to get this idea that blessing is something different than Jesus tells us it is. Yes, there is blessing in having more than enough in this life. There's a blessing to be able to be blessed so that you can give away uh, more than, than you should give away. I think we should be living lives where as we accumulate more, that we're giving away more. But that's not the only people who are blessed. Jesus has quite a different way of and perspective of looking at things, and even the kingdom of God in general, is a total flip of our mindsets. Like, we cannot think like Jesus when we're thinking like we think. And that's a really hard thing to do, because obviously Jesus gave us our mind. He gave us uh, a ability to think thoughts. He gave us an ability to learn, and we have all learned the ways of this world very easily because it's what we're pulled towards. It's what our flesh wants. It's what our sinful nature desires. But if we want to be someone who is truly blessed by the definition that Jesus gives us, then we have to think differently. And so today I want to challenge us. Are we thinking that blessing is only the way we have thought it always has been? Or are we going to be able to hear and apply and live out these words that Jesus has spoken to us? My prayer is that we all would be able to shift our thinking to where our thoughts are not our thoughts. And we don't build off of our thoughts but we build off of the thoughts and teachings of Jesus. You know, he says in the word that our thoughts are not his thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So much higher than the heavens from the earth are his thoughts from ours. He thinks so differently than us. 
you know, we would put in there, blessed are the rich, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We would put in there, blessed are the happy, or blessed are the strong, blessed are the ones who get up every day and go after it and grind and don't stop till they get what they want. That's what we would put in there. That's what the world tells us to do. That's what we tell ourselves to do. But Jesus, you, you imagine this scene. He's sitting on a mountainside. A crowd followed him. The disciples are there with him and he sits down. He doesn't stand up behind a pulpit. He doesn't get everyone's attention by yelling and screaming and being berating everybody or being demonstrative in his presentation. He sits down to teach them is what it says. It says it right here. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain and when he sat down, his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And even that word there about he opened his mouth and started to teach them is a word that means more of a, a calm teaching, not a heavy yelling, screaming type of teaching. So he's sitting there, people have come, and he's teaching how to live in a very calm, a very humble a very effective way. And even though he's teaching like this, at the end of chapter 7, it says the crowds were so astonished by how he taught that he taught with authority that they had not seen the scribes and the Pharisees teach with because Jesus did it differently. He shows us how to live this life differently with humility, with kind of a poor in spirit type of approach to life. Now, when I think about the word poor, I don't even like using the word poor. I think about the word poor and I think you don't have enough. I think of poor as like, that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid being poor. We want to avoid being poor in our spirit. We want to be lifted up and strong and happy and encouraged. And Jesus is saying, blessed is the poor in spirit. Well, what does that mean? It's an approach to life that we humble ourselves and realize that nothing we have will make us happy and nothing we don't have that we're trying to pursue will make us happy. That it's a mindset that says, I have all I need in Christ Jesus. Whether I'm poor materialistically, whether I'm rich and have abundance, I do not find my blessing in these things. Jesus is teaching us to be poor in spirit, not that we should not have anything in this life, but that we should treat these things as if we didn't have these things, we would be okay. We would be content. We've learned to be content, whether in much or in little, as the Apostle Paul said, that he has come to be content in Christ and Christ alone. That whether he is shipwrecked, whether he is up in a palace, whether he's in prison, or whether he is in a comfortable place, he has found contentment in Christ. And this is one of the hardest things to realize. Because we want comfort now. We want a great house now. We want a great car now. We want things now so that we can enjoy this life. But if that's what we're waiting for to enjoy this life, we're never going to be happy. We're never going to find peace. We're never going to find true joy. And he even says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Their minds are set on the eternal. Our minds need to be set on the kingdom of heaven repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. We need to be living lives that are repentive, that are humble, that are meek, and that are poor in spirit, not lifting ourselves up, but only lifting up Jesus Christ, coming to him as a poor beggar saying, Lord, please have mercy on me. Please have mercy on my soul. I beg of you. These, these are the type of people that are blessed is what Jesus said is saying in his word. So I encourage you today, 
Ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to help change your perspective on what it truly means to be blessed. Because we run after all sorts of things and all sorts of comforts and all sorts of temporal, uh, non-fulfilling things in this life. And yes, God gives us the ability to gain wealth, but he gives us that ability to gain wealth, he says, to extend the kingdom of God, to promote the gospel, to see people's lives changed and turned around. If we're living a poor in spirit type of blessing, we take what we have and we use it for the kingdom of God. It's a challenge, but I pray that we all change the way we look at who is truly blessed, who is truly blessed in this life and in the next. I hope that this encouraged you and challenged you in a way to see Christ's words, not just be astonishing to us, but to actually apply them to our life and see us become changed and transformed through the power of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. He has great things in store for you. I want to pray for you before we go. God, I pray that every person watching would have a true encounter with you, that whether they are already following you or whether they do not know you yet, that they would truly begin to realize how much they need you. I pray that the person listening who needs salvation, that you would reveal yourself in a fresh new way. You would reveal your truth to them and they could be saved. And God, we just give you the glory and the honor and the praise today. We lift up your name and we thank you for this life and giving us a way where there seemed to be no way to spend the next life with you in eternity, Lord. We just pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, God bless you, truly bless you the way Christ means to bless you so that you're blessed in this life and in the next life to come. If you have any questions about today or you'd like to reach out to us again, you can find our website in the description below. You can find our social media handles. You can also give to a live church if you'd like to support the ministry. There's a link there that you can click on and give and donate to a live church. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you next time.